Thank you for joining College Possible Philadelphia for today's virtual launch and learn event presented by the Ralph L. Hose Revocable Trust. Ralph L. Hose and his wife, Eleanor K. Hose, were committed to helping support students in and around Philadelphia on their journey to and through college. We thank Ralph and Eleanor for their gift to College Possible Philadelphia, which will have a lasting impact on our students for years to come. Welcome. It is my pleasure to welcome you to College Possible's end of the year celebration, our Launch and Learn, and Learn event for our students. If you are familiar with College Possible, with which everybody on this Zoom is, you know that at the end of every program year, we take the time to celebrate the commitment and the achievement of our students. However, this year, due to COVID, we were unable to gather together in person to have that celebration. And to be honest, we thought that COVID was going to rain on our parade and that we weren't going to be able to celebrate our students at all. But my team came together. And when we thought about all of the hard work that our high school seniors have put in to get to this point, and we considered, when we considered all of the obstacles, the inter insurmountable challenges that the class of 2020 had to overcome in order to get to this point, we were not going to allow COVID to stop our plans. Instead, we became increasingly committed to making this event happen. We really wanted to celebrate our students, so we made it possible. So I just wanted to let everyone know before I go any further that this event is being recorded and it will be used for media purposes. So I just wanted to make you aware um, that that is taking place. I am so grateful that you took the time out of your day to join us, College Possible Philadelphia, for such a momentous occasion. Uh, at this year's event, it's even more exciting for us because we are celebrating our first cohort of college graduates. I started with College Possible in 2016, and these students were just seniors in high school. But four years later, they have completed the program, and they are graduating college with a bachelor's degree. So super elated to celebrate them today. Today, we are joined by our high school students. We have juniors on the line with us today. We have our graduating seniors. We have college graduates, as well as board members, esteemed school partners, the School District of Philadelphia, and special invited, invited guests. State Representative Joanna McClinton, Jamie Cassett, the Chief Education Evangelist at Google, and Otis Hackney will be joining us a little bit later, the Chief Education Officer of the City of Philadelphia. 
Today we have an engaging program lined up. We hope our students walk away charged and inspired. I would like to take a moment to pause to introduce and acknowledge College Possible Philadelphia's new executive director, Dia Williams Adams. Hello everyone, so nice to see all of you. Thank you so much for greeting us, Dia. Dia it has just joined our team recently as our new executive director, and she has a passion for the mission, and she is excited to lead the charge of the Philadelphia team, and we are excited to have her. I also want to make sure I acknowledge the Philadelphia team at large. The leadership team is joining us today, and later on in our program, we will hear more from our executive director. Lastly, we are grateful to be joined by College Possible's new president, the visionary for the future of College Possible, Craig Robinson. Would you help me in, in welcoming Craig as he shares a few words with us this afternoon? Well, uh, thank you so much, Precious. And it is great to see everyone's face. So many of you, uh, just such familiar faces from my recent visit to Philadelphia. Um, I join in Precious's remarks and her warm welcome um, of Dia. Um, as our new executive director, I'm incredibly grateful for Precious and the leadership team in Philadelphia uh, for putting together this wonderful event. And despite all the circumstances that could have easily uh, derailed such an event from happening, it is just wonderful and frankly a, a mark of the continued innovation um, of College Possible and all of our leaders and particularly our team in, in Philadelphia. Um, it's an honor to be able to join you, but frankly, to be in such esteemed uh, company as our distinguished guest and our guest speaker. Um, I think it speaks volumes that you have put together such a, an incredible lineup. Um, and that just tells you the importance of this event. Um, and so um, people come out when they have something to come out for. Um, and so the fact that you all have achieved this incredible milestone and so many of you are poised to be next in line um, to continue to, to carry on the torch um, is why so many of us are committing the time to just be here and celebrate with you. Um, so I shared this in the chat earlier, but I'll say it again. Like, this is the best part of the day. Um, I think all of us are, we're reading news articles and we're just seeing, knowing that we're experiencing challenging times as a country, um, in our economy, social justice issues continue to plague us um, and tear at our, our heartstrings. Um, but it is, a, it is a warm and reassuring reminder, and it is food for the soul to be able to gather for a moment like this. Um, and so just to, to gratitude to Precious and Zach, Brian, the entire team, and Dia, um, thank you for the opportunity to join. Um, and, I just, and I appreciate the privilege to be part of this and turn things back over to Precious. Awesome. Thanks so much, Craig, for sharing your sentiments and for, like you said, taking, I know you said this is the best part of your day, but we appreciate, we know that you are a very, very busy man, and we appreciate that you were willing to take this time to join us um, in this celebration. It is not a small feat that our students are accomplishing the heights that they are accomplishing, and we want to make noise about it. We want the world to know there's a lot of negativity going on in the press. There's a lot of negativity, even as it relates to young people, but we have some young people people that are doing amazing things and it is very important for the world to know that this has happened. As many of you know, College Possible is committed to helping low-income students gain access to college, but also stay in college, defeat the odds, and achieve a college degree. And so we could not do the work that we do without the assistance of our AmeriCorps members who serve with us year after year as coaches and supporting our students, both on the high school level and in the college level. They give up their lives for 10 months to come to work with College Possible, and they serve our students with heart. They serve our students in such a passionate and committed way, and that is how we're able to produce the results that we're able to produce. And so I am going to just give way to one of our amazing Tech Connected College coaches, and we are going to hear from her for a few minutes. Please welcome Alexis Buck. Hi. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are helping congratulating our class of 2020. I know it was not an easy year, but you made it through and are one step closer towards college, a career, graduate school, and any other future endeavors. 
I was in your boat last year, as were many of the AmeriCorps members. I felt the excitement over graduating and worrying over the next step. Luckily, I found out I would be serving with the AmeriCorps and couldn't wait to start my journey. The reason I chose College Possible as my next step is because I love education and learning. My mother has been in education her entire career, and education was strongly stressed in my family. We were taught that anything can be taken away from you, but no one can take away your knowledge, no one can take away your degree, and how it is one's visit biggest asset. I also gained my love of learning from an early age because I knew what a struggle it could be to learn and was aware of the many challenges that some may face. I feel everyone has his or her own battle. However, mine was originally with expressing ideas. I was able to grasp concepts, but wasn't able to convey my thoughts. I was not able to come up with full sentences until the age of three. My mother took me to different doctors, and one doctor told my mom not to expect me to amount much in life. After much speech therapy, I learned to speak and articulate my words. I was able to go on to college and graduate with honors and distinctions. Just as I had battles, I am sure all of you had battles to face in order to arrive at where you are today. Besides my passion for education, my other main motivation for becoming a college coach was to make college easier to navigate and support students as they face their own battles while achieving their degree. It, it felt time went by quickly over these past few months. It seemed to be just short time ago when we were all prepping to meet our students, preparing for college visits, or organizing the career readiness workshop. As a coach, I most enjoyed speaking with my students and celebrating their successes. One of my students told me that she received a job offer right after graduation and let me know she told me even before she told her parents. Another one of my students and I spoke multiple times a week to work on his goals. For every A the student received, I did a little cheer. Further, I appreciated my students' patience with me for my very frequent fast food reminders, in case you forgot. It's due each year. I will miss each and every one of my students and appreciate that they allowed me the opportunity to get to know them. But even more so, I appreciate them for teaching me about grit and resilience. My students have demonstrated to me that everyone has challenges. However, all you can do is control how you respond. In parting, I want my legacy to be that I valued each of my students and enjoyed watching them grow. Although we will no longer be their college possible coaches, I hope each student knows that, they that we are all cheering them on from afar. You all have faced your own hurdles to get to where you are now, but please believe in yourselves. If you are ever unsure if you are doing the right thing or having trouble with something, know that you have an army of supporters behind you. Those supporters are and always will be the college possible team. Thank you again, and congratulations on all of your accomplishments and future successes. Thank you so much, Alexis, for sharing those heartfelt and thoughtful words and for sharing your experience and resilience. Uh, and when we think about our coaches at College Possible, we always want to make sure that we have coaches that can model resilience for our students. And surely Alexis is a great example of what it looks like to model resilience. So thank you so much for sharing those words. And now we're going to be a uh, privilege to hear from one of Alexis's students. Let me tell you a little bit about this amazing student that is getting ready to speak. We're getting ready to hear from Ivana Lash. And when I started with College Possible, Ivana Lash was just a senior at Parkway Center City High School. Again, graduating with the class of 2016. Since then, Ivana went on to Valley Forge Christian College where she graduated with a degree in elementary education. Uh, she graduated magna cum laude. Can we just pause and snap for that? She graduated magna cum laude. She played softball while she was on campus. She was a peer mentor, a student link, and she was an a, a ARA, which is a resident advisor. Ivana Lash went to college and literally killed it. She did an amazing job, and we are so excited to hear from her. So I'm going to give way so Ivana can grace us this afternoon. Hi guys, can you guys hear me? Okay, hi everyone, um, thanks for that introduction. I didn't even realize how much I, I like really did until you said something about it, but thank you um, so much for this opportunity. I am honored and grateful to speak with you guys on today. 
So with that being said, my question is why? This question literally surrounds our very existence and everyone needs an explanation for everything that we do. So since you could walk, your mom probably asks you, why would you do that? And your teacher probably always asks you, please pick an answer choice and explain why. Your college possible coach probably asks you, now why would you want to join a program like College Possible? And one may ask why finish high school, while another may ask why continue to get a college degree. Well, at this point, you probably have three main goals. To finish high school, one, to go to college, and to obtain a degree. Although those are really good goals, it's not really good enough. And you're probably asking, well, why not? And it's only because you're missing three main factors, which is your what, your where, and your why. So what? What are you going to school for? What are the things about society that you want to change? What is that one thing that nobody else is doing that you know that you can do? Well, for me, it was the fact that I would go to school and I didn't see that many people of color working in our schools. So the only people of color that I really saw were the ones working in the cafeteria, the security guard, or like the people that work in the offices. And I knew that I wanted to change the face of education so that a young black girl can look at me and imagine herself in my shoes and that she can see her reflection in my eyes. So pretty much your what is your goal that you're trying to obtain? So where, where does this all begin? Where can you find your purpose behind your goals? Your purpose begins in you. Every choice that you make will either bring you closer or further from your destiny. So it's your choice to obtain high SAT and ACT scores. It's your choice to maintain good grades and continue to go to school, although it's online at this moment. It's your choice to continue to do the right thing even when no one is watching. It's your choice to choose a college that works best for you. And it's your choice to do everything that you can do to become the best version of you possible. For me, every Tuesday and Thursday of my junior and senior year, I made my way to college possible to sit for a few hours and listen and learn and do everything that I needed to do. And then it was also my choice to maintain good grades while in school, even though I had no idea what was going on in AP calculus. I'm not going to lie, I had no clue. And I also had to make the choice in what school I wanted to attend, although my parents, they really didn't agree with my um, choice at first. And then once I got to college, I still had to maintain those good grades. I still had to network. And I even made good friendships. And I even lost a few as well. So the next question is why? Why identify your purpose and figure out where you're going to start and how you're going to get there? I chose my why for two reasons. One, to have more knowledge, and two, to create change. Like Alexis said, this world can take so many tangible things away from you, but the one thing it cannot take is what you know. And your knowledge is power. So if knowledge is power, then I have the power to enlighten others around me. And by doing so, I'm creating change, just one life at a time. So you've probably been stuck wondering why are we enduring this tough time? You've probably been wondering, why, why have we been taken out of school? Why am I stuck in the house? And why does the future of our nation just seem to be a blur? Although some of the answers to these questions may be unknown, the three questions that you can answer is what are you going to do? Where do you start? And why? So thank you guys and congratulations to the class of 2020 and congratulations to everyone finishing up their junior and senior years of high school. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Ivana, for sharing those electrifying words, those powerful words, reminding us that regardless of what our context is right now, that if we have a resolve on the inside of us, that we can really accomplish anything that we want to accomplish as long as we know what our why is. You just reminded me of my why of why I do this work, why I'm so passionate, because I too was a little brown girl 
in the city of Philadelphia as a, in a, you know, a single parent family coming from a low income community. And I wanted to be able to give back. And so thank you for just reminding me and encouraging me. And so now I'm going to turn the mic over. We have another young lady who grew up in Philadelphia um, and now is a powerhouse in the state legislative, uh, state representative. Um, Joanna McClinton is here to join us. She is the representative of the 191st district, which covers Delaware County. Um, and we have two schools in Delaware County, which is Upper Darby and um, our Penwood School uh, is also in Delaware County. And I have had an opportunity to watch uh, State Representative McClinton and all of her educational endeavors. We had an opportunity to grow up together and now she is the first uh, Democratic, both Democrat and woman, um, to be the head of the caucus in the State Representative of Pennsylvania, in the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania. And so I am excited to have her with us this afternoon. She's gonna share just a few brief words. And so please give a, a warm College Possible welcome to State Representative Joanna McClinton. Thank you, Precious. Good afternoon, Ivana. I don't even want to say too much. <laughs> like That was absolutely soul stirring. I hope you have podcasts and a public Instagram that we can follow for inspiration because we all at different moments in life, even well after school, have to focus on that why. So thank you for sharing those powerful words. Congratulations to the class of 2020, and then to the class of 2021, class of 2022, class of 2023, whoever you are on here, congratulations to you. Precious, thank you for this opportunity. To your director, Dia, and to your president, uh, Craig Robinson, it's great to be with you, and I will be very brief, especially after Ivana. Now, all I wanted to share with you all is that while you're on your journey, particularly to the class of 2020, I know this pandemic has come in like a wrecking ball. And sadly, so many things that are momentous in your senior year, you're not able to do. And so there is a temptation to say, well, this just is the worst. Why did I do all this work to get through school if we can't get on the stage, if we can't do our cap and gown, if we can't do our little shuffle as we walk away with our diploma? But even without your prom and without a formal graduation, I just want you all to know that so many of us are proud of you. We look forward to all that you will accomplish. This is one of many milestones. There are more milestones that we won't have to social distance. We'll be able to gather, to hug, and celebrate with you and look forward to those moments. And as you transition directly into college, I was also a little girl in Southwest Philly, my mother raising me by herself, who uh, went to college, didn't finish, my dad had completed college, and I had dreams of always being a lawyer, and I had no idea what that would entail. I studied political science at LaSalle, and my first semester of political science, my professor said, you need to change your major. I did a paper. And in the middle of the paper, he wrote a long paragraph on how he stopped reading it and how he didn't know what I was talking about and how I, I shouldn't have been a political science major. And then we go a little bit further and he tells me to my face, you need to get a new major because you're not going to make it in this major. Well, I don't know where Gene Hallis is today, but I would love to let him know not only did I make it in the major, while I got a C in his class, thank God I didn't get a D, I got a C in his class, I ended my political science journey at LaSalle, graduating with honors, with A's, all A's the rest of the way. I went to law school, fast forward, was a public defender, helping so many in my community, representing people for almost 10 years, and now I'm in politics. Like, <laughs> I don't know where he is, but I just want to let you know there will be folks who are not like this great team surrounding you at College Possible. There will be a few that will try to distract and discourage you on your dream and tell you you can't do it. You need to change your major. You need to drop out. This isn't for you. College isn't for everybody. But whatever types of hardships you will face this fall, especially if it's virtual and online, do not be dismayed. Think of this story. That one politician, whatever her name is, she was a political science major and was told at the age of 17 at LaSalle University to drop out. Not basically, change your major, find something else. And fast forward 20 years later to the date, I'm surprised at this career that I never thought of. So be ready to succeed, 
to flourish and no matter what anyone says to keep on going and to add Ivana in there to answer your why because you'll find yourself in circumstances where you have to know why you started and why it's important to finish. Congratulations and thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for those riveting words and for sharing your experience with our student state representative McClinton. Can we just give her a air clap? I know we can't hear everybody, but it's so excited. She also knows sign language. So if you see me going like this. <laughs> this means that we are celebrating her as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now we are getting to the point where we are going to hear from our keynote speaker. I'm super excited about hearing from Jamie Cassip. Jamie is the Chief Education Evangelist at Google. And what that simply means is that he is a thought leader as it relates to technological innovation in inquiry-based education. And so um, I am going to allow him to actually introduce himself. We got a quick little video because he could tell you what he does so much better than I can. And once he has finished, we are going to give way to hear Jamie speak to us about being the problem solving generation. Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Jamie Cassip, and among many things, I am the Chief Education Evangelist at Google. I also get to travel around the world and speak at events on topics such as technology, education, the future of work, Generation Z, and I work with a number of organizations in the nonprofit world, in the business sector, in the education sector. Uh, this is where I work in downtown Phoenix. I'll show you a little bit around. I'll give you a tour at some point, but this is the studio where I am. It's about life. It's about life skills, it's about work skills, it's about skills for the future, it's about education and learning. I have a lot of experience with technology. Before Google, I was at Accenture for seven years. Uh, before Accenture, I was, I was working for Governor Cuomo. So I have a lot of work, 25 years of work experience that I want to be able to share with you. Uh, but I also have some life experience. Uh, I am a first generation American, born and raised in Hell's Kitchen, New York. Uh, not the New York today, not the Hell's Kitchen today, but the Hell's Kitchen from the 70s and 80s when it wasn't a great place to be raised. I was raised by a single mother. I grew up on welfare and food stamps. It was a nasty place to grow up. Uh, it, you know, lots of people that were my friends, that were people that I knew never made it out of that community, never got to become anything. Uh, I got lucky and part of that luck came from education. So I'm very passionate about education. I believe that education disrupts poverty. That's who I am. And hopefully you guys get something out of this. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. Please join me in giving a warm College Possible welcome to our keynote speaker, Jamie Cassett. Hey, Precious, thank you very much. The, uh, first of all, that's the best introduction I've ever seen. So for your first Zoom uh, event, that's pretty good. So, um, and I'm glad you had a lot of stuff in there because that means I don't have to talk about it. Just to summarize, I, I know a lot of what you guys are experience, experiencing, right? I'm a first generation American. I was born and raised in Hell's Kitchen, all those things that you saw in the video. And also, thanks for promoting my YouTube channel, which you all should subscribe to right now because there's a lot of things that I'm building there, right? So I just uh, put a video up about how to do video conferencing calls, how to network on link, how to network on LinkedIn, how how to deal with imposter syndrome, which some folks here started talking about because that's what you're going to experience in the world. So, thank you for that introduction. Thank you for promoting the the, the channel. I want to talk about, since we did all that already, you don't even know my background, I've been at Google for 14 years, focused on education, right? So if you used uh, Google Apps in your schools and your programs, you know, G Suite, Gmail, Docs, uh, I launched that back in 2006. Uh, today we have 100 million users using those tools around the world. <clears throat> the other crazy idea I had at Google was to launch Chromebooks in education, and if you're using Chromebooks, that was my team that put that together and launched that. So my job is to work across all the different things that are happening in education uh, and make sure that our team is focused on those things. So that's what I currently do. Now, 
what I want to talk about is a couple of things. I want to talk about three hours worth of stuff in about 20 minutes and then answer any of your questions. But just to kind of highlight some of the things that you guys should think about as you're going forward. And the first one is to understand that, you know, my position is when we talk about college and career, we're shooting too low. Like, like that, that's, that's great, but that should be a stepping stone to what you, to what you want to do. What you want to really do is have people in influential positions and in powerful positions, right? Getting a job is great, but what we need to do is get more me's, which are you guys into positions of influence and power. So not just think about jobs, but think about uh, solving problems. And we're going to talk about that in a second or starting businesses or, or becoming politicians and, and having an influence over policies and creating laws and becoming lawyers, like, like all those kind of influential positions. So college and career is great. I want to shoot higher than that. I don't want to just think about college and career. I want to think about influence and power, right? That's what we want to be able to do. Now, to do that, you have to think about, and I, I want to build a little bit on what Ivana said about like the why. So the way I look at that same thing is to think about it this way, which is instead of asking or instead of answering the question that you've all been asked, which is, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? If I ask you to put your hand up, everyone has been asked that question. That question doesn't make sense anymore because of the world that we live in. That question used to make sense when I was a kid, right? When jobs change gradually, when things were slow. We don't live in that world anymore. We're, we're, we're living in a world where everything changes fast and suddenly. And so what you need to think about isn't what do you want to be when you grow up. What you need to think about is what problem do you want to solve, right? What's the problem that spins in your head? And it doesn't have to be a social problem, which would be great if it is, but it doesn't have to be climate change. It could be making better microphones, making better cameras, making better video conferencing platforms. If you watch Shark Tank, every single person that walks into that tank is solving a problem. Most of the time, they're solving a problem that you didn't even know you had. So the idea of problem solving, what's that problem that you want to solve? And then the second question that's just as critical is how do you want to solve it, right? How do you want to take your gifts, your talents, your passions to solve that problem? Because there are a million ways to solve a problem, right? So for example, Let's take climate change. If climate change was the thing that the problem that you want to solve, most people will say to you, oh, climate change, you need to be a researcher. You need to be a scientist. You need to be someone who works in the STEM fields. And yes, that's a couple of ways to solve a problem, but there are other ways to solve that problem. What if you're a gifted musician? What if you're a gifted photographer, right? You're, you have an unbelievable eye. I, I, photography is my thing, right? That's what I do. But what if you are a gifted photographer and the way you can solve climate change is by going out and documenting climate change? What if you're a gifted writer? The way you can solve climate change is by going out and writing about climate change. If you're a gifted educator, you can create education programs and curriculums and teach climate change in schools. So how do you want to solve that problem is just as important as what's the problem that you want to solve. And then the third thing to think about is what do you need to know to solve that problem? What are the knowledge, the skills, and the abilities that you need to have to solve that problem? So if we continue using that example, right? And you have climate change on one side and photography on the other side. Well, what do you need to know? What, what are the skills that you need to have? What, what's the knowledge that you need to have? Both in climate change and in photography, what do you need to work on? What skills do you build and then how can you start building those skills, right? Whether you're taking classes in college, online, learning through YouTube, what do you, how can you start building those knowledge, those skills, and, your, and those abilities? And who out there is solving that problem now that you can connect with, that you can, look, you can talk to, right? So that you can reach out to and say, hey, I am a photographer and I know that you are a photographer that's focused on climate change. I want to do that too. What skills do I need? Where, how did you start your career? You know, you can reach out to people on LinkedIn right now. Everyone's home. Nobody's anywhere, right? Like you can reach out to people and they should respond. And, and so being able to understand that, which is very similar to what was said before, 
that idea of the why, it really comes down to what do you need to master? And given that, you need to have good digital skills so that you can identify those things. You can identify the information that's out there, the knowledge that's out there, so that you can take all that and solve the problem that you're passionate about. And wherever you are on that, on that, in that ecosystem, whether you don't know what problem you want to solve, then focus on that. If you don't know how, how, what your talents are, focus on that. And if you know what your problem is and you know what your talents are, but you don't know what you need to learn, that's where college comes in, right? So I work with universities. And when I work with universities, I, I say to them, I go to your website and I look at, the, at what students look at. And if on the website it doesn't say, hey, student, what problem do you want to solve? Come here. We're going to help you solve it. That's what it should look like in college. So what can you use college for so that you can solve the problem that you're passionate about? The great thing about college, and you know, we get into these debates about whether you should go to college or not go to college. I'm completely for college. And the reason why I'm completely for college is because you get those four years, or in my case, four and a half years, because I was a double major, but you get those four and a half years. Oh, and I also went to graduate school. So it was like six years for me. Um, you get that time to explore. You get that time to dive deep into the problem that you're passionate about. You get that time to build networks and people that you can connect with. You get that time to dive deep into topics that you're interested in. So that's, that's what college is about. It isn't, it isn't just about the piece of paper because we've turned education into a process, right? You are educated. You go through education. You understand. You you know. You go through first grade, and then you go through high school, and then you go through college. And we have these milestones like today, and then you get one when you graduate college. But and that's great. But what you need to think about it, that is that education isn't a process. Education has to be a mindset. It has to be a thing that you just believe you have to constantly learn. For example, when I started my YouTube channel. A year ago, actually, um, I knew zero about photography, about videography. I knew zero about editing videos. As, as, as I said earlier, I'm a photographer. I didn't even know my camera had a record button on it, right? Like the best videography skills I had was on my phone. I could do little clips. So I knew nothing. And I went to my oldest daughter, who's actually a, uh, has a degree in film. She works in film. She's an editor. She works for uh, CNN. She's an editor. She makes fake news. And so she, uh, I went to her, who, who's a professional in the space, and I said, hey, I want to start a YouTube channel. What do I need to know? And, and she said, after she laughed for 10 minutes, she said, okay, start here. You, you need to shoot at 1080. You don't need to shoot in 4K because the data load is going to get too big. You should shoot at 1080. You don't. You shoot at uh, 24 frames per second. You keep your ISO at 100. You double your shutter speed. And if you go outside, that's going to blow out your exposure. So what you need to do is lower your exposure by, by using an ND filter, but get a variable ND filter so that you can control the light. And I said, oh, thank you. Cool. That's so helpful. Okay, here's my second question. What the hell do any of those words mean, right? I knew zero. And... And from there, I started to learn, and I learned how to do that. And now I can have the best debates about whether 8-bit is as good as 10-bit and whether you should use an external recorder to record in 12-bit, what the megabyte per second recording speed should be. Like, I can have those debates. I can edit my videos. So if you go to my YouTube channel and watch those videos, those are all me. Nobody's doing those. I, I film those. I edit those, right? And that's the skill that I think that we need to focus on the most. Now. When we think about that idea of what problem you want to solve, how do you want to solve it, what do you need to know, the most important con concept of that what do you need to know is to focus on the skills that you need to build. So when you go to college, if you focus on these skills, it doesn't matter what you end up doing, they're transferable to whatever you end up doing in your life, right? So the, the skills are problem solving, collaboration, the ability to learn, and, and, and being able to be creative, right? Those are the skills that are human skills because digitalization is taking over a lot of the process work. And those human skills 
are going to be absolutely critical. So we've talked about problem solving and what problem do you want to solve and this idea of, you know, what the other skill is the ability to learn, right? And, and again, I'm not saying the ability to take a test or the ability to highlight a textbook. I'm saying the ability to learn by that mindset, that idea that education is a mindset and being able to say to yourself, I don't know how to do something. Where can I go learn how to do it? If, if you want to trigger me, you, you call those things soft skills. They're not soft skills. They're absolutely the most essential things that you focus on. So while you think about college, while you're in college, are you building those skills? Are you building your problem solving and collaboration and critical thinking skills? Those are the things that we want to focus on because we've been talking about those skills for such a long time. We call them 21st century skills, right? We're 20 years into the 21st century. Those skills are critical right now. So this idea, and that's all kind of encompassed with this idea of the ability to learn, this idea that you need to learn how to learn because you're going to be learning for the rest of your, of your life. And so starting with that idea of the ability to learn puts you in a position to have some self-awareness to say, I don't know how to do something. Where can I go learn how to do it? Another trigger word for me or another trigger phrase is uh, fake it till you make it. I can't stand that terminology, right? This idea of fake it till you make it because no, it's much better to say, I don't know how to do something, but I'm willing to learn how to do it. How can I learn how to do it? So if you come work for me, for example, and, and you're faking it, how do I know that you don't know how to do something, right? Like I, I want to know that you don't know how to do something so I can guide you, so I can teach you, so that you can learn, right? Because I'm not hiring you uh, because of some skill set. I'm hiring you because of these skills that we talked about. I'm hiring you because you have problem solving skills and you have, and you have the ability to learn and you can learn anything. So those are the most critical skills that you want to focus on when you get to college because jobs change, careers change, all those things change, but those skills go with you no matter what you do. Think about it this way. I've been at Google for 14 years, and when I, when I graduated high school, when I graduated college, and when I graduated graduate school, Google didn't exist. So there was no way for me to prepare for a job at Google. What I could prepare for is to build those skills, and those skills are transferable to everything. Now, the other thing that I, there's two more things that I want to talk about, and then I'd be happy to answer questions. But the, the most important thing that you need to think about in that realm is to understand that it's not just about building those skills, but it's about using those skills. And this is what I mean. So let's say, let's go back to the example where the problem that you want to solve is climate change and the way you need to solve it, the way you want to solve it is through photography and a job comes up. And a job comes up and it's to be a photographer for a taxi company. I, I, don't, I made it up, right? And you're like, wait a second, a photographer for a taxi company, that's not, that's not climate change. That's not in line. It is because you're developing the skill. You're developing your skills that get transferable. So look for and think about the skills that you're building when you do internships, when you, when you get jobs. Because again, I, my job, you know, I started working in politics. I worked for Governor Cuomo. Then I worked for Accenture for seven years. And then I've been at Google for 14 years and I got recruited to work at Google, not because of what my previous jobs were, but because of the skills that I brought to the table. So that's why you need to think about that. And then the last note that I have here in my three hours of notes, and again, a lot of this content you'll find on my YouTube channel, so please subscribe to that is that here's something that I wish somebody would have said to me when I was sitting where you're sitting, right? And that is that who you are and where you come from, especially if you're growing up the way I grew up, you tend to hide that. You tend to not talk about it. And it makes sense because you, whether consciously or unconsciously, you realize that people, society tends to equate low income with low ability, low income, poverty with laziness, poverty with, oh, you're just not working hard enough. So you hide that part of your life. I'm here to tell you to not just hide, not hide it, but to own it, to, to live it, to be it, because that is your competitive advantage, that you have your experiences, 
the things that you've experienced in life, those views, those perspectives, that is your competitive advantage. Because when you make it and you are in one of those positions of influence and power, your point of view is going to be the different point of view at the table. And that is what your competitive advantage is. So use what you use your background, be proud, be proud of your experiences, be proud of what you've gone through, because that is what your competitive advantage is. And that's why the company that I started, my side company is called Ghetto People Productions. That's the point that that I'm not Yeah, I came from the ghetto. I and I can we can produce things right. Because the problem that I'm trying to solve is to get as I started this is to get more people like me into positions of power and influence. And there's a lot back to what I said earlier, there's lots of ways to do that, right? There is education, we can focus on education programs, we can focus on uh, on after school programs, we can focus on higher education, we can focus on employment, we can focus on lots of different ways to solve that problem. So that's what we need to think about. Because my assumption is this, and this is what it comes down to. And again, happy to answer questions. I can make one of two assumptions in my life. Assumption number one is that I am in the position that I am in and I've been able to accomplish what I've been able to accomplish because I'm a super genius and I have a 500 IQ. And that's what my wife thinks I think. Or there are millions of students who are just like me, who have the same capacity and the same capability that either never got access, never had an opportunity, or never had the luck. And the problem that I'm trying to solve is to eliminate luck as the most important requirement to making it out of the situations that we find ourselves in. And so that's the problem that I'm trying to solve. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? How do you use your gifts, your talents to solve that problem? And then using college, using education, using YouTube, using everything to understand that learning is continuous and ongoing, that you could literally learn how to do something all day. You can learn for 16 hours, go to bed, and then learn something the next day, that your brain doesn't get full. And now it might take you four minutes to figure out how to do fractions. It might take me four years, but, the, but it's possible, right? And the, the time is irrelevant. It's the amount of effort that you put into it. If you go to my Instagram account and it's just, you know, at JCASAP, you'll see a photograph that I just posted uh, on, on an astrophotography picture that I took out in the desert a couple weeks ago. And when you look at that picture, you need to understand that when I edited that, that in Photoshop, I spent all day on Sunday and Monday learning how to do that. That's the ability that you have is that there is nothing that you can't learn how to do. So constantly learning and constantly doing that. And the last thing I'll say is that you're going to be opposed. You're going to face barriers. You're going to face people who say, no, no, don't do that. I remember when I was in fourth grade uh, and I did one of those assessments of what you were going to be when you grow up, it said IRS agent. And I didn't even know what that was. But my teacher in fourth grade said, oh, no, you're probably not going to be an IRS agent. But if you, if you stay out of trouble and you stay out of jail, you could probably get a good city job. And you're going to hear things like that. What you need to have is a reality of this distortion field. You need to believe in what you believe and, and, and ignore the naysayers, ignore the people who want to put you down because you need to believe it. And I believe strongly that what you believe in is what happens. And so believing that you can make it is what's going to help you make it. And with that, I'll pause and answer any questions that you guys might have. Wow. So if there's any students on here or anybody that have questions, you can unmute yourself. I know I have a question percolating, but I'm going to hold back. You can unmute yourself. This is an opportunity to, to bring your voice to the table and ask Jamie a question. Um, so the floor is you guys. Hey, Precious, it's Joe. I think I'll, while the students or the coaches are thinking of their questions, um, Jamie, thank you for joining us on behalf of the board at College Possible Philadelphia. We really appreciate um, your thoughts and your wisdom, and 
and also thank uh, the leadership team, Precious in particular, for putting this together. Would you also think that in what you say, and just so you know, uh, your daughter's a colleague of mine. I work for AT and T, and obviously at CNN. So um, that's kind of cool. It, do you also think for for the young people that it's also it's a marathon? It's not a sprint. As as you look at your 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 life journey and your work journey and and the continual learning and and what we say sometimes is you have to reinvent yourself as you go along. Is there is there some relevance to that? Yeah, I think I think that the, the, here's the great thing about about focusing on the problem that you're passionate about. When you focus on that problem. And again, there's lots of different ways to solve that problem. It is a marathon. I mean, you can't, I can't solve getting you guys into positions of influence and power in a year, in two years, in 10 years, in 20 years. This is going to take a long time and it's going to be attacked in different ways. But the cool thing about having that passion for your problem is that it never feels like work, right? Like I don't work. I don't, that's not, I don't. I, I get up and I, and I focus on my passion. I, this is, today, I'm excited to come talk to you guys. This isn't work for me. This is what I like to do. And so when you find that thing, it worked. the idea of work goes away. And I know people don't believe me when I say this, but I dread Fridays because usually when we're not in a pandemic, Friday, Friday means the weekend's coming and we have social events and I got to go hang out with people and, and I much rather be in my studio working. So Monday comes and I pop out of bed and I come into my studio here and I focus on that problem that I'm trying to solve. So when you find that problem, there's, there, it's not work anymore. Now, the marathon part of that is if, if, if you know the skills that you need to build, you might be doing something for a long time that helps you develop that skill that has nothing to do with the problem that you're trying to focus on. But build the skills. Like, for example, for me, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys if I didn't learn project management skills at Accenture. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I didn't learn organizational development theories and practices when I was working for for. Uh, for Accenture. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I didn't learn policy and how policy gets implemented if I didn't work for Governor Cuomo. So it's about developing the skills. And if you focus on the skills, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like you're growing. Thank you. Awesome. Are there other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> All right. If there isn't, I, I'll go ahead. I, I, hi, hi, Jamie. This is Dia, the uh, executive director for College Possible right. Philadelphia. Hello. Thank you for being here today. I just wanted to say um, that phrase, uh, "fake it till you make it." <laughs> It, it bothers me as well because I don't believe in it. I believe you need to take the steps that you need to do to learn all that you need to learn. And my particular phrase is model it until you master it. So that right. includes learning all the things that you sure. need to learn. So I agree with you 100%. Thank you for being here to share your story. And I open it up for anyone else that may have another comment or question. Yeah, and can you imagine uh, you, you want to learn how to fly an airplane? So why don't you just fake it till you make it? Just go get an airplane and fly it until you make it, right? Like, no, right? It's it's about learning that that gets you to where you are. Now I like that I like that twist on it, right? I like that model, model it, right? Because that's an important element to it as well. You can go through the motions of it, and you're learning as you go. But the most important thing in life to me is asking for help, right? And that's the other thing, and I, and I talked about this in my imposter syndrome video, is that those of us that are growing up the way we grew up, asking for help is not in the culture. Asking for help is not uh, something that we are used to or because there's nobody ever to ask for help. But asking for help and saying, I don't know how to do something, will you help me learn this, is absolutely critical. Everybody does it, and we need to do a better job. And that's the, you know, when I posted those videos about uh, LinkedIn and how to network on LinkedIn, one of the reasons is because most students never learn how to network, never learn how to reach out to people. So that's why I posted those videos is to be able to go out and ask people for help. 
Wow. Thank you. Um, Jamie, so many things you said, and I, I just had a quick question yeah. uh, because you mentioned that where you come from um, and what your lived experience has become your competitive advantage. And I truly believe that. I believe it all matters. And I always say it matters where you come from, but it doesn't matter where you come from in the sense that it doesn't stop you from being who you want to be. Uh, but can you speak to maybe um, something that came from your lived experience that became in a competitive advantage for you. Maybe our students don't know what their strengths are, what they bring to the table based off of what they've been through and what they've experienced in their lives. But could you share a little bit of what you were able to take into one of your job opportunities that became a competitive advantage? Yeah, actually, I have. Uh, th there's nothing that's more closely related than this, which is I grew up on welfare and social services and, and food stamps. And then I went to college, I graduated college, then I went to graduate school and I graduated from graduate school. And then I got a job working for New York State. So I was living in Arizona, got a job working for New York State in this management internship program, this prestigious program that was the governor's office focused on big problems that the state was facing. And one of those was welfare reform, right? And so I went back to New York and worked with a team of the Department of Labor, the Department of Education, the Department of Social Services, the governor's office. We put a cross-collaborative team together to focus on the issues of what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong in that system. Do you think anyone had more experience in that world than I did? No. So I immediately added value because of my experiences and what I went through. I could go in and talk about lived experiences because of the job that I had. That's one area of it, but it doesn't have to necessarily even be like things like poverty. It could be your cultural experiences. Like this is my point about not just stopping at college and career, right? The, the, the African-American market is a trillion dollar market. The Latino market is a trillion dollar market. Who's building products and services for those markets, right? Are we going to let other people build those products and services or are we going to build them? And we now live in a long tail economy where you can take a passion, you can take a problem that you want to solve, a niche even, if you're in the products and services world, and focus on that because you can focus on one specific thing. When I was a kid and I wanted to start a business, I had to get a storefront, I had to get an inventory, I had to get equipment, I had to hire people, I had to go into the community and understand what, what people wanted and put it in my store. It was a complicated thing. Today, anyone with a laptop can start a business. And so if you are an artist, if you are a, a designer, you can sell your services, for example, on Fiverr. Or if you, are, if you know cultural significance of items in your community, you can take those and sell them on eBay. My point is that there's so many different ways uh, to, to be able to start businesses and start adding value based on your experiences because at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're your own brand and your content is your experiences. And the fact that you have different experiences than everyone else goes a long way. Even at some place like Google, where I've been for 14 years, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone internally at Google that has my background, right? And so when we talk about issues of inner city students, or when we talk about education, when we talk about issues of equity and access, who do you think everybody goes to, right? Like that's, that's your competitive advantage. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that um, insight. That was really helpful. Um, I'm gonna give one last call and if there's no more questions, we're going to move on. I just don't wanna cut anybody off. Go ahead. Um, so Jamie, I am Kyle. I am one of the College Possible students and I would like to ask, um, even though you've had all these years to model and master your craft, are you still learning more or does it come to a point where you stop learning and you're just doing it? Yeah, that's a great question. And look, I, I'll tell you this. It's, it's, again, it's this mindset, right? Where I remember graduate school. I remember the last day of graduate school. It's very vivid. Where I remember sitting in the computer lab, typing up my last 60-page paper on WordPerfect 5.1, and none of you have any idea what I'm talking about. But I'm sitting in the computer lab typing my last paper and then I hit print and I sent my paper to the dot matrix printer and I had, you know, a good 45 minutes to kill because those, those papers printed real slowly. 
And I'm sitting there thinking, I am done. I'm done. I am done learning. Right? And so this mentality that, no, no, I was done with the process of learning in that process world. But 25 years ago, that wasn't true. So you are constantly learning, constantly doing things. And it's, again, it's this mindset. I can't tell you how many meetings I've been in, in my career, my life, where someone is speaking in a meeting and they're saying something, right? They're using a, a, uh, an acronym, like, and then what we need to do is focus on the BPM and the BPM and this, and they're saying some acronym. And, and then I finally raised my hand, I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what BPM is. And then everyone else is like, yeah, no, I don't know what it is either. We get afraid of asking questions. We get afraid of looking bad. And in my head, the people who ask questions are the smart people. The people who want to know how something works are the smart people. So that understanding of always trying to figure out how things work is learning. And so learning becomes this thing that just becomes your mindset and that this thing where you constantly learn. And, and it doesn't matter what realm you are in. I'm learning videography. I'm learning photography. I'm a speaker. I go to events and speak at events. I'm learning how to do that. I am now learning how to do keynotes via Zoom, right? So this idea of constantly learning is what you need to think about. Thank All you. Right. And if, listen, if you uh, hit me up on LinkedIn, if you have questions and you want to ask questions publicly because I know people get shy, my message button on Twitter is wide open or my DMs on Instagram are open. So ask away. And, you know, and if you want to have your experiences, make sure you leave comments on the YouTube videos because hopefully those, those videos are helpful to you guys. Awesome. Can we just give Jamie a hand of applause? Thank you so much, Jamie. Thanks, Precious. Thanks for having me. Uh, we appreciate you coming. And I just want to share with everyone um, how blessed and privileged we were to have Jamie. I was perusing LinkedIn and he was reaching out to organizations and saying that he wanted to share the knowledge and the wisdom. And there are a lot of people that make it to the level that you're on and they are not willing to reach back and pull someone ahead. So we are extremely grateful for your time today in doing that. And I will walk away with the points of knowing that, you know, we have to perfect those skills of the ability to problem solve, the skills of collaboration. It's, it's okay to synergize with other people, um, the, the ability to learn and keep learning, and the ability to be creative. Uh, we are an innovative generation, and we want to make sure that we maximize those skills. So once again, thank you so much, Jamie Cassett, for being our keynote speaker this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Thank you. As we move forward in our program, I am going to digress, and I am going to introduce our new executive director, Dia Williams-Adams, and she is going to take us on towards the end of our program. Give Dia a big hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Precious. Uh, I will say that this has been an amazing virtual event so far. I've enjoyed every aspect of it, hearing from Ivana and Alexis and Jamie and State Rep McClinton. I've been thoroughly blessed by everything I've heard today. Um, I'm beyond excited to be here as the new executive director of College Possible Philadelphia, and only three weeks in, and I know my why 100% and I am looking forward to serving all of our students in the best way possible to ensure their success. So this launch has been a wonderful way to send off our students and I was told that one of the highlights of the College Possible launch are the giveaways. While we celebrate all of our students, this is a time where we would like to acknowledge a few of our students for their outstanding achievements and commitment to our program. Okay, first, uh, we'd like to give a special uh, thank you to our class of 2020 college graduate speaker, Ivana Lash. Ivana, you will receive a gift basket from Wawa for your relentless commitment to College Possible and for your willingness to share inspirational words with the students today. Thank you. You're welcome. Next. The College Possible's most engaged junior student, Sarah Fafana of Dobbins High School. Sarah had over 82% in engagement and the most attended SATs. Sarah will receive 
an Amazon Kindle Fire. Okay. Next, the College Possible's senior who had the most college acceptances, Kamani Hill of Mass Bomb High School, who received 14 college acceptances. Kamani will receive an Apple iPad Mini. Next, the College Possible's most engaged college student goes to Jasmine Fields of Newman University. Jasmine is always easily accessible to her coach and has been willing to serve as a speaker at various college possible events. And lastly, students who registered for this event were placed into a raffle to receive a giveaway. And the winner is Amber Kane. Amber, congratulations, you will receive a Mophie portable phone charger. Congratulations to all of our winners and all of our students. I want to say a special thank you to all of our board members for your continued support and for donating the gifts for our students today. Now, without further ado, I'd like to invite the Chief Education Officer of the City of Philadelphia, Mr. Otis Hackney, to give our official launch to our students who will be moving on to the next phase of their academic journey. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Hackney. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully I'm coming in loud and clear. Um, thank you, Dia, it is great. I look forward to meeting you in person. Um, uh, and congratulations on your role there at College Possible. Uh, and quickly, I know Joe, the board chair is there. The beard looks good. I see the Corona beard is kicking in, Joe. You look great. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, you our, too. Our, our past, got you, Otis. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, I pass cross all the time. And um, obviously, Precious, thank you for um, inviting me to be a part of um, you know this event today to help launch um, the students or um, uh, launch the students onto their next roles and and and, and steps that they're going to be taking. Um, and it's great to follow up after Jamie. Jamie, you were awesome. Thank you very much. I think you and I can talk about a lot of things for a long time because uh, I often talk about the uh, why I, I don't like soft skills either. I, I call them the essential skills um, in terms of, of what students need to acquire. And I always talk about how they need to be transferable, scalable, and um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little nervous actually but they need to be transferable um, um, and scalable and making sure that students know how, uh, what to do when they have turned those skills and also making sure that they're marketable. Uh, that's the third uh, component is for students to acquire marketable, uh, scalable, transferable skills. Um, and when they think about it that way, uh, it, it does make things a little bit easier because uh, it's, it's not just what you know, it's what you know how to do. And to piggyback on what you said is also what are you willing to learn? So, and that's why having those skills, um, and that is what helped me tremendously as I transitioned from someone who was a teacher here in the school district of Philadelphia to now the chief education officer. And I did not think once, you know, if you had asked me in high school, what would I have been, you know, raise your hand, tell me what you want to do. There wasn't even a chief education officer in the city when I was in a high school. So it was, you know, once again, a role that did not exist, that does exist now, um, and something that I never would have anticipated. Also, thank you uh, and shout out to Representative McClinton. Um, I pass across all the time. Thank you for all your ongoing support and education uh, locally and at the state level for what you do for children. I know what, what your investment is, is genuine. Um, and so just want to thank you for that. Um, and, and, to, and to all the students and to the AmeriCorps members, coaches, uh, let me thank the coaches really quickly. Um, thank you for the work that you do um, for uh, the students to help them get on their journey. I tell everyone, none of us get here on our own. We all had coaches and mentors, uh, but I will charge the young people to make sure you identify that and, and know the difference between a mentor and a sponsor. We all had great mentors, but you gotta identify that sponsor, that person who actually opens the door. Because a mentor could be you know, somebody at your barbershop, somebody who just coaches you and kind of tells you and, and give you the right things and, and information you may need to know. But that sponsor is that person who's in that key role and so one of the essential skills is learning how to do outreach, engage that person, 
figure out a way to develop a relationship because that sponsor is the one that can open a door and get you a seat at a table, get you a, a, a spot in the room so that way you can move forward in your career and follow that passion that Jamie was talking about earlier because we've all had great mentors, but we also had amazing sponsors. And don't be, and understand your sponsor might not look like you and that is okay because a lot of times when you're climbing and you're trying to figure this world out, you have to find that sponsor that person might not look like you, you might not identify with them right away, but they are a key person, not to use, but also but to gain a relationship so that way they can help you because a lot of them are looking to reach back and help that young person with talent. And so if there's something that I can charge you to do today um, to all the students and, and, and recent graduates, uh, but just to make sure that you do those things and really think about all this information that you have to synthesize that you heard today and great information that you heard and, and understand, and if you don't know what synthesis is, it's just pulling all of this information together so that way it makes sense for you and you can apply it to that next thing that you're trying to do. So just let it sink in, um, but just really looking forward to what you have to offer. And the, lastly, because uh, I know that we are pressed on time, it's just understanding the role. I, I have a great role as Chief Education Officer here in the city of Philadelphia, working for Mayor Kenny. Uh, whether you love him or hate him, I don't know. Uh, but I can tell you that he is a man who is, 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 is very much engaged in investing in education. We have done that from the beginning. That was one of the reasons why I was able to come on board. And mind you, before I had this job, I was a high school principal. I was principal at South Philadelphia High School. Once again, no one would have thought that guy who was at the principal at South Philly would end up being chief education officer for the city. Um, and that's why I do talk about those marketable, scalable, and transferable skills. That is a, that is a reality for me. Um, and so, but understanding if he was not uh, such a lover of education, I would not have left my school. So for me to come on board to do this work here in the city under uh, the leadership of Mayor Kenny, as we try to make sure that we increase investment for education, which we have done every year. We started community schools, we did pre-K, and currently we're working on more access for students to higher education. We, um, we are, we propose to city council right now. We're hoping that we get it through um, a scholarship with CCP, um, and it's something that we would like to build on, but it's called Octavius uh, Cato Scholarship, in which students get last dollar. So we wanna make sure that students don't have student loans, but also there would be a, a stipend for basic needs and transportation of $1,500 per semester. We know we can't do it for every student yet, but we at least wanna try it and see how it goes to just make sure that students not just get to college, and as you know for folks at College Possible, it's persist and complete. You have to get there, and, but we know sometimes there's ob obstacles and barriers that negatively impact a student's um, ability to do that. So we wanna make sure that that work, um, uh, that the work that we're doing um, on the city side can help to support our students as they transition from high school and go into college. So if we can get that model going and people really uh, like it and we can double down on it you know, in, over the next few years, it's something that we're really vested in doing. Um, and just looking forward to what you're gonna do, um, once again, graduates, and bring your talent back to our city. Our city so desperately needs it. Um, I know some of you will go on to school, or you just finished school, and you, and you may relocate, and that's fine. But if you can bring that talent to Philadelphia, it is much needed. Because looking at um, all the students that are participating today as such a diverse group of people, we need them in the room. Sometimes I'm still one of the few African American and African Americans in the room. Um, and, it, and that's crazy to me. Um, so we need that talent um, for people to come back so that way that diversity of thought perspective is there so that way we can solve the big problems that people have been talking about uh, this afternoon. So I just wanna thank you, congratulate you. You're gonna do amazing, you've already done some amazing things, but you're gonna do so much more. Um, trust me, in many ways I wish I could trade places with you. I think the opportunities, that I know young people, it feels like it's really, really hard. And you sometimes wonder, but there's so many, so many opportunities for you all today. Um, and I don't mean to demean you by calling you young people. It's, it's not an insult, it's a description. Youth is a, it's a very valuable thing to have. So I, um, just congratulations and uh, looking forward to what you're gonna do in the future. And thank you again to College Possible for having me today. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hackney, for launching our students. Uh, before we conclude, I would like to take uh, thank everyone for taking the time out their very busy schedules to join us today. I want to thank our students, our juniors, our graduating seniors, our college graduates, our delegates, our state representative, Joanna McClinton, our keynote speaker, Jamie Kassab, Chief Education Evangelist at Google, and Mr. Otis Hackney, Chief Education Officer for the City of Philadelphia, 
and our president of College Possible, Craig Robinson. Thank you all for being here. I also would like to say a special thank you to the Philadelphia leadership team, AmeriCorps coaches, and the launch committee who worked diligently to help make this virtual launch and learn a successful event for our students. It's been a pleasure sharing this special moment with all of you. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day. Great job, y'all. <laughs>